Health Watch is presented by UMass Memorial Healthcare. Here, caring for you. Welcome to Health Watch, presented by UMass Memorial Healthcare. I'm Brittany Schaefer. Today, we're here to talk about new developments in the fight against cancer here locally. Where do we stand in the fight against cancer currently? We are on the cusp of a truly a new era right now. Uh, we are beginning to, to have successes and diseases which were previously thought to be hopeless and untreatable uh, and, and truly delivering genuine hope. Uh, we see a number of uh, exciting discoveries that are either recent or on the horizon. Uh, this past year's Nobel Prize in Medicine was awarded for uh, immunotherapy, so one way of activating the immune system to fight cancers. Uh, one of the diseases that I personally care for, acute myeloid leukemia, uh, was one that went for decades without advances, um, that we literally were using the regimens of my mentor's mentors um, from 30 or even 40 years ago. Uh, and within the last two years, we've actually had eight brand new drugs approved uh, and more on the, on the horizon, and in fact, uh, likely to see more approved within the next year or so, uh, and a number of exciting clinical trials in that space. And again, bringing hope to patients that, that really had no options previously. Uh, so it's a tremendously exciting time as we are perfecting existing therapies. We're figuring out better who to treat and what to treat them with. Uh, we're figuring out better ways of detecting the disease and figuring out who's cured and who's not, uh, and, and really saving the, the tougher therapies only for those who really need them, uh, but also getting those uh, therapies to patients sooner when they have a better chance of working early in the course of the disease. Uh, and lastly, just, uh, uh, just so many exciting uh, treatments, uh, both uh, that are now available to us and that will soon become available uh, that, uh, that I think will change the course of the disease. So I think for a lot of people that had given up hope um, and really thought that many cancers would never be curable, uh, I think we have genuine reason for hope as, as time goes on now. And um, I think that over the next several years to next decade or so, uh, a lot of game changers uh, coming into play. What are some of the latest developments in oncology at UMass Memorial? Top things on that list are our bone marrow transplant program will actually turn 25 in just the next couple of months. Uh, so 25 years of uh, performing transplants as the field has evolved really got in on, on the early edge of that and have remained on the cutting edge of, of transplant as time has gone on. Uh, we have uh, a brand newly renovated uh, unit uh, set to open on our 8 North floor uh, that will uh, literally offer state-of-the-art rooms and, and lovely surroundings for our patients. Uh, we uh, have a, a number of exciting recruits coming, so we are actively growing as a, as a division uh, and as a cancer center. Uh, we have two new faculty that will be joining us shortly, uh, including one on Monday. Um, and we have uh, a number of recruits over the coming year, so we're looking to actively grow the program, expand over time. In terms of, of the offerings that we have, uh, we have a number of subspecialty experts in almost every uh, disease focus that you can conceive of in cancer across the board. Uh, obviously we partner with our sister disciplines in radiation and surgery and, um, and then many other domains as well that, that add to the care of, of cancer patients. And then some other exciting things on the, on the very near horizon, we actually will be opening a number of first in human trials, uh, first in human clinical trials. So these are literally the most cutting edge therapies, brand new agents, uh, newly introduced in the field that we think hold a lot of promise. Uh, maybe even the potential of cure for, for some very difficult to treat diseases. So we'll be opening uh, one of them shortly. In fact, just left a meeting about that. Uh, and uh, on the heels of that should be opening two others. And I expect within the next year or two, many more to come. Uh, we're also looking to build out a dedicated, uh, what we would call an early phase clinical investigation unit uh, that would be uh, ideally equipped to deliver these brand new therapies, especially on the outpatient side. Uh, our inpatient facilities, including our bone marrow transplant unit, are already very well equipped for this uh, and really be able to deliver uh, the most cutting edge, the most highly promising treatments to our patients here in the Worcester area to meet the existing demands in this region. And as the, the population grows and, and Worcester as a city is, is I think, undergoing quite a renaissance, mm -hmm. that uh, really looking to keep pace with that. So almost every area that you can conceive of in cancer, we're, we're likely going to add faculty over the next year or two. Uh, certainly within the next three to five years. Some of the areas in which our immediate recruits will be coming include uh, one gentleman that will be joining us in leukemia and bone marrow transplant. Uh, another uh, faculty member will be joining us in breast. Uh, in fact, one of our graduating fellows and she, she will be joining us this fall. Uh, we have um, 
openings and, uh, and exciting recruits already coming through for thoracic oncology, which would primarily be lung cancer, uh, for um, uh, sarcoma, for uh, GI cancers, and also for um, uh, likely we'll add somebody in the GU space uh, in the very near term. How does cancer treatment affect the patient's entire family? To start with, cancer is a devastating illness, and I think it touches just about everybody, but often what is forgotten is how much of an impact it has on family members and support structure in addition to the patient themselves. I uh, really want to offer them the absolute best quality of care here close to home where patients don't have to worry about transportation needs, parking, just the aggravation of, of having to travel for therapies that are often tough to take and often very time consuming may end up being, uh, for some of our treatments, uh, given on a daily basis even. Uh, certainly though on repeating bases, uh, everywhere from every week to once a month. Uh, and so really trying to limit the, the hurdles that patients have to face, allow them to focus all of their energies, all of their resources on just fighting the cancer itself. Uh, we offer subspecialists in each of these domains, and by that I really mean that these are world-class experts uh, that are, are focused on very specific diseases uh, where they can keep pace with the most cutting-edge findings that we are delivering state-of-the-art therapy as we go. Uh, and and the, the last pieces I would offer are that um, we really have the full service offering, the full complement, so uh, ranging from pretty well tried and true therapies that are well established all the way through to these early clinical trials that I mentioned and bone marrow transplant. How important is collaboration with other institutions when treating cancer? A few advantages of, uh, distinct advantages of partnering with Dana-Farber. Uh, number one, simply joining their collaborative network is a, a seal of approval, if you will. It's a sign that we meet uh, certain standards of, of excellence in, in delivering cancer care, uh, and they audit this regularly. Uh, along with Dana-Farber, we also are accredited by many other bodies, the Commission on Cancer, uh, the um, Foundation for the Accreditation of Cellular Therapy, which is the BMT accrediting arm. Uh, we are also uh, the NEBPC, which is a breast cancer um, uh, accreditation body, also is, is one of our uh, um, successes uh, as well. The um, in addition to, to just merely that seal of approval, we have access to, to the Dana-Farber specialists. So in the rare cancers, the particularly rare ones uh, that we may not be quite as, as well versed in or that we may not uh, have a dedicated subspecialist for, and again, those are the rare exceptions, we have access to a specialist in that arena. Um, we have the ability to have expedited second opinions. I always tell someone if they're buying a car that they should, they'll get a second price quote. This is your life, and so if you want a second opinion, that's perfectly understandable. Uh, so we have ready access to, to their specialists um, in, in very quick turnaround times. Uh, and probably most useful is the fact that we can actually present the cases at a shared tumor board staffed not just by us and Dana-Farber, but also many local hospitals in the region who belong to this collaborative network. And so you really get the opportunity to have specialist input or subspecialist input from a variety of centers and a lot of great ideas in the mix. And that's without the patient ever having to leave the comfort of their home or having to leave the site. That we, we are able to get input from, from many physicians, uh, even spread not just throughout the region, but occasionally uh, further distances. Uh, the other uh, advantages are belonging to their education programs, so maintaining that state-of-the-art knowledge, beginning to able to share things across both sites or multiple sites again. And lastly, we actually have the ability to access one another's clinical trials. So obviously there's the ability to refer to one site or the other uh, within the network, but for certain of those trials, there's actually the ability to open the trial at multiple sites. And so if there's a particularly good trial and one that we think would, would be taxing for patients to travel into Boston or vice versa to travel here, uh, we're able to open the, them at one another's sites. What are the benefits of the team approach to cancer treatment? Cancer is obviously a very complicating and as I mentioned a devastating disease and it really does take a large team to, to fight this, uh, to, to be on the patient's side. Um, that often uh, hematology and oncology are the home discipline for those patients mm -hmm. where often the, the specialty that sees patients most frequently, but we work hand in hand across the board and that team uh, in any given discipline is going to consist of physicians and nurses and uh, nurse practitioners or physician assistants, uh, our, our patient care associates, uh, our social workers, pharmacists and PharmDs that, that deliver this care in a much broader family of, of it would take me uh, uh, a long time to, to list the laundry list of people that are part of these teams. And then as you begin to cross disciplines, you bring in radiation oncology and surgery. 
there are many supportive disciplines that are critical, uh, whether it's pulmonary and critical care, uh, no pun intended, uh, infectious disease, uh, for certain of these, um, many of the, the, the variety of surgical sub-disciplines uh, that, that are involved, uh, certain specialties like dermatology, both to handle skin cancers directly, but also to handle rashes and other fallout, neurology to, to handle some cancers that involve the nervous system, but also side effects of our treatments and, and the like, uh, and so on and so forth, that it is, uh, it is um, a, a disease that touches almost every discipline within medicine. Uh, on top of that, um, we um, have multiple sites within our region, and so we have uh, our university campus at UMass Memorial Medical Center. We also have a site at Health Alliance in Fitchburg associated with, uh, in the Clinton area or with uh, Lemonster Hospital. And then we also have a Marlboro campus attached to Marlboro Hospital. Uh, in addition to that, as a member of the Dana-Farber Collaborative, we have access to the, the team in Boston. We have access to uh, many other uh, hospitals within the region and the ability to pick one another's brains and really come up with the best therapy for any given patient. Uh, and I, ideally to find trials within the region. Uh, there are most of these diseases, we have wonderful clinical trials here uh, to, to deliver those cutting edge therapies. Uh, occasionally there's a, a better trial elsewhere and mm -hmm. we would be certainly quick to refer wherever we think the best care for a patient may be delivered. Sometimes that's even beyond that larger network elsewhere in the country for those patients that have the means to travel. But the good news is, is that the vast, vast majority of patients don't need to leave the Worcester area to get the absolute best in cancer care, uh, that we're able to deliver it with our doctors and our nurses uh, and our larger team here. As I mentioned, those clinical trials, bone marrow transplant, uh, state-of-the-art facilities to deliver this in terms of our infusion center and our inpatient floors. Uh, so really, really well equipped to do this. And I think one thing that really sets us apart is it is very much a family atmosphere here. It's one thing we hear and want, uh, repeatedly from our patients and one thing that we aim to deliver that patients really feel as though they are a family member and we feel that they are as well.